So today, to all my American subscribers and anyone who is watching Spider-Man No Way Home today, today is the big day. Today, I will be watching it today at 3 p.m. So by the time I upload this, I'll either be at the theater already or it's just going to be a couple of hours before I go to the theater. I'm going to try uploading this video as soon as possible. But I want to give a final speech because today is game day. Today is the moment we've all been waiting for. Today is the day... That all the world stops on its track, pauses for a bit, and goes watch and goes to watch Spider-Man: No Way Home. But before we start off today's video, if you're new to your channel or if you're a returning subscriber, I don't know whatever you are, you get to choose what you are. But <laughs> make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the notification bells. That way, you can be notified for your content on your channel. My name is Isaac. I'm the host of Your Multiverse of Movies, and we've been talking a lot about Spider-Man No Way Home. We've been covering the news. We've been just breaking everything. If you go, if you've been a subscriber for a long time on this channel, back in October of 2020. I made a video being completely shocked that Jamie Foxx was even confirmed to be coming back as Electro in, in Spider-Man No Way Home. At the time, we didn't know the title, but we've been covering everything. When Alfred Molina confirmed he was going to be Doc Ock, uh, we talked about that. When the first rumors of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield were popping up, we talked about that here on the channel. When the title for No Way Home came out, we talked about that. We've been talking about Spider-Man No Way Home when the trailers and everything dropped. We've been talking about it nonstop, and today is the day that all ends. I know the premiere happened. I know if you go on YouTube. By the way, I've been very hidden on Twitter and YouTube. I've actually not been even looking at my feed because I just do not want this film spoiled for me. And any, please do not spoil it in the comment section down below. Please don't be that guy. And please, everyone, be careful in the comment section down below. Please, I hope you guys... And anyone who spoils... In the comment sections, I will block you, report you, and do anything possible to get you. Even after I've watched the movie and I see your comment, I'm still going to block you and report you. Because here in the multiverse of movies, we do not tolerate spoilers. Because this is a part of the movie fandom that does not deserve spoilers. But anyway, sorry if I came off as pretentious. But <laughs> uh, yeah, today's the final day. Today is the day, the moment we've all been waiting for. And I know some people are going to be watching on Friday. Some people are going to watch it on a Saturday, on a Sunday, or maybe the next weekend. Don't worry, on the channel, tomorrow morning, I will have a non-spoiler review out for you guys, ready and available, but um, but by like Monday, I'll have like a spoiler review, so don't worry about that, we're even going to do a spoiler discussion next week, but don't worry, I'll always make sure to put spoiler warning, but tomorrow morning, I will be doing a non-spoiler review, I'm probably going to love this movie, but I want to talk about why this film is so special to me, first of all, let's get it out of the way. The theories, the rumors of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield returning. Let's let's be 100% right now. That's a giant possibility. That's too big of a possibility right now. And, you know, I have not seen any of the leaks, so please do not show me anything. I, I, I you know, I don't want to see that. Ever since I was a kid, you know, when I was a little, little, little kid, my parents would put on Spider-Man 1 and 2 just to get me distracted they would often play and i grew up just watching you know doc ock and spider-man fighting in the train and you know as a kid spider-man was my favorite superhero of all time spider-man to me you know i thought it was cool the web shooters and all that and you know even my parents believed that i would even i would, I would grow out of that face because a lot of people do grow out of their phase of you know loving something as in your, as in your childhood you know like for example some kids I don't know. They love Teletubbies when they were kids and then they eventually grow out. And look, I've grown out about, I've grown out lots of things. There are lots of things I grew out. Like, for example, uh, I love the Shrek movies when I was a kid. But the older I get, the more, the less and less. Look, I know that's controversial, but as much as I like the Shrek movies, to me, I don't get emotional when I see them again. But Spider-Man has always been a character who has just been there my entire life. And the older I get, the more and more I relate to him. I'm just a young 20-year-old, recently turned 20, so happy birthday to myself. But um, I'm just a young 20-year-old. And Spider-Man, you know, the older I get, the more and more I relate to him, the more and more I love him. And so the more and more time passes on, those movies that my parents assumed I would grow out of just become more lovable and relatable to me. And especially Spider-Man 2, because to me, Spider-Man, you know, the, the whole point of Spider-Man is not about Spider-Man in and of himself. I'm talking about the character under the mask, the per um, under the mask, the person underneath that mask. The story of Spider-Man is not about Spider-Man. It's about the guy underneath the mask. Whether it's Peter Parker, Miles Morales, Gwen Stacy, 
I don't know, Miguel, I don't know. You know, that's the whole point of Spider-Man. Anyone can wear the mask, even you. That's why I loved Into the Spider-Verse, and that's why I love the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films, because I grew up with them. And to me, what I love about them is Peter Parker was not, you know, he wasn't the chosen one. He was he wasn't the guy who was destined to be Spider-Man. He was just an average teenager who just happened to get bitten by Spider. And that's what I love about the character of Spider-Man. You know, well, yeah, Spider-Man's not my favorite character. Batman's up there. Superman's up there. You know, the difference between Spider-Man and other characters is the other characters, you know, Batman is a person who inherited billions of dollars. He inherited a billion dollar company. Uh, and then you have a uh, Kal-El. He's an alien organism being who is a God who has godlike abilities. Wonder Woman literally molded by clay from Zeus. You know, there's been a lot of characters who, who aren't as relatable as Spider-Man to me. Spider-Man has always been kind of the every man superhero personified. And that's what Stan Lee set out to make when he got Spider-Man. Why not have a superhero who has financial struggles, who can't pay his rent or wants to go to college or is in high school struggling or can't get the girl or something like that. Just something small. And Spider-Man has always been the every man. I said that in my last video that I haven't uploaded for a while, but, uh, you know, Spider-Man has always been the representation of the every man, the average guy. Spider-Man is not a billionaire who inherited a multi-billion dollar company. He is not someone who was gifted godlike abilities. He was not gifted these abilities. He just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. And now comes with great power comes great responsibility. And that's, you know, I've always believed that the Spider-Man character helps you know, people my age, you know, 16, 17, 18, maybe 15, 14, however young you are, I've always believed that the character of Spider-Man has always been kind of that role model to people within that age range of who don't know who they are, who are not defined, who don't know what they will be and who don't know what the future is, whether you want to, I don't know, be a doctor, a psychiatrist, whatever, you know, your Spider-Man has always been that character to relate to those people because Peter, in a lot of his stories, you go back at it, his story is not about, oh, I want to save the world. It's not about that. It's about a kid, a guy who doesn't know what his life is. He's just a kid. And he has to have this, you know, he has to have financial struggles. He, he struggles with parenthood. And he just happens to have to be saving people in New York. And Spider-Man is the everyman. In Spider-Man No Way Home, you know, I know I've been sp talking more about the character of Spider-Man, but Spider-Man No Way Home is bringing back Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man who taught me to believe, who taught me, you know, it's not wrong to feel certain ways. It's, you know, Tobey Maguire, you know, a lot of superheroes don't have financial struggles, but when you see Tobey Maguire's, he obviously has financial struggles and you see him on the screen and you think to yourself, oh my God, this, this is normal. He has women tr str struggles. I mean, struggles. He has parenthood struggles. He has things like that, and he even has friendship struggles. And you know, when I see Tobey Maguire, the older I get, the more and more I love his film. Spider Man Two to me is a top ten film of all time. To me personally, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's probably the movie I've seen the most in my life. Like, it's not my favorite movie of all time, but it it probably is the movie I've seen the most. Like, there are times where I feel down in my life, and I'll watch Spider Man Two. Um, you know, Spider-Man 1, I'll watch occasionally. I'm not a fan of Spider-Man 3, but Spider-Man 2 is just there. And, you know, his and even his villains. The thing I love about Spider-Man villains is they don't tend to be e born evil. They're not like these people who are born evil and they want to kill people because they're bad. No, they typically have a story. They have a background. They're just people who are flawed. Like Peter. Peter is not perfect. Peter is flawed. And even Peter acknowledges... He's, you know, he was given this power, you know, and with great power comes great responsibility. And to me, Spider-Man is the ultimate role model for, you know, anyone who's under the age of like 25, anyone who's under the age of 25 and, you know, even older, even older, because even then when you're older, you still are trying to figure out your future. You're still trying to figure out some things in your life. Like, are you going to get married? Are you going to have kids? And Sp the character of Spider-Man has always kind of been that he's the every man. And even the place where he's at, like, for example, Peter's a kid from Queens. You know, it's not nothing too special. It's not like Superman, who's from a nice metropolis or Batman, who's from gritty Gotham. It it he's from Queens. He's just a kid from New York. 
an average New Yorker. And, you know, that's what I've always loved about Peter Parker or Spider-Man, really, because he's not special. He's not unique. He's an every man. He's the every man. And to me, I'm not someone who always has agendas for characters. I'm not like someone who has notes and notes and notes. But to me, the character of Spider-Man has always been the every man. To me, that's the one thing you got to get about Spider-Man right. And now, even Toby, like, I, obviously we know Toby Maguire isn't going to be the only Spider-Man. Andrew Garfield. I love Andrew Garfield in the first Amazing Spider-Man. I don't really like the second Amazing Spider-Man that much. I think it's all right. But, you know, Andrew Garfield. I mean, I, I was 12 years old when this movie came out, so I don't have as much nostalgia for his films, but I still like them a lot. I really love the first Amazing Spider-Man. I think the first Amazing Spider-Man is a great Spidey flick. Tom Holland's Spider-Man, I think, embodies a great teenage Spider-Man. I'll admit, I've had the most, I've criticized Tom Holland's the most, although I'm a big fan of Homecoming. Like, on this channel, I often get called a Holland hater. I'm not a Holland hater at all. I love Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man Homecoming, I was literally on a podcast a couple of weeks ago, and I said Spider-Man Homecoming to me is the top five favorite MCU film, and everyone looked at me crazy. Everyone was like, really? And I'm like, heck yeah, I love... Because Spider-Man to me is the everyman. To me, Spider-Man is the mo one of the most inspirational characters of all time, and Spider-Man, again, is the representation of the everyman. And now that we have No Way Home, coming back, bringing back all these villains, bringing back all these characters I grew up and loved with, to me, that's, you know, it's historical. This is a cinematic historic achievement that I never thought would be possible. If you had told me just two years ago, actually, maybe a year, I, no, a year ago, we were already talking about this, but if, you know, take me back to two years ago. If you had told me there'd be a film with Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland, all three together as Spider-Man fighting villains from their past with Doctor Strange involved, with Multiverse involved, I would call you, I would have called you crazy. I'll be honest. I would have called you crazy. I would have looked at you. I would have looked at you and thought, what the heck is wrong with this guy? What, what, what are you on, man? What are you on? And even after watching Far From Home, I'd still be like, what, 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 do, you, what do you think about, man, man, be realistic, be realistic, man. And Spider-Man No Way Home, my final message is, I hope I have a great time. I, I I'm, you know, the trailer's. You know, have made it seem like this is going to be an emotional flick about Tom Holland finally becoming the Spider-Man we've all always wanted. I mean, it even got High Top Films' attention. High Top Films even said that Tom Holland felt like an actual Spider-Man. So it's crazy to hear that. To me, as a Spider-Man fan, as someone who grew up with the character of Spider-Man, I'm, I'm going to go crazy. I think I'm going to cheer. I think I'm going to cry. I think I'm going to scream. This movie is one for the ages. This movie is going to do special. It's going to do miracles. It's going to be special. It's going to be a movie we all look back at 10 years from now and think, wow, I can't believe I was part of history. I cannot believe I was a part. Because, you know, a lot of old uh, cinephiles I meet here on YouTube, they'll talk about how they waited in line for Phantom Menace. Or they'll talk about how when they were a kid... Uh, they watched the original Star Wars trilogy or, you know, even talk about when they went to go watch Batman 89 and, you know, events like that. And, you know, to our generation, us younger people who haven't really experienced that that much of that. Spider-Man No Way Home is that. Spider-Man No Way Home is part of that. I mean, look how hard it was to get tickets. Look how hard it was. Look how booked they are. Look how packed they are. Look how much rumors and antip anticipation happens to this film, you know. I mean, I know we've had movies like Infinity War, Endgame, Batman vs. Superman that have been historical films, but Spider-Man No Way Home is a little different, and I do think that 20 years from now, this is going to be seen as a, you know, there are movies you remember, there's like the Predator movies, there's the Terminator movies, there's Avatar, there are films that people look back at and think, I was a part of history, and I think Spider-Man No Way Home is going to be like that, and I feel like when I have kids or grandkids or whatever, they they when they talk to me and, and tell me what are what are some of the best moments of your life i genuinely feel like one of the things i'll bring up is there is this movie with all the spider-man and they all teamed up multiverse related and and uh the, the the crossover event and they'll be like granddad go go back to bed you're crazy man they're gonna be like really those old spider-man that's nothing like maybe future generations are probably gonna look at us and think multiverse crossover 
dude, that's from the eight. That was from the Stone Ages, and I'm probably gonna square up on them. I'm gonna square up. I'm gonna be like, nah, buddy, you just you talk crap about my Spider-Man flick. <laughs> but uh, it is it is crazy to think we're now at this point. It is crazy to think that you know we're here. You know, in a couple of hours, I'm wa- I'm gonna watch Spider-Man No Way Home for the first time in a packed theater, by the way, with a lot of my friends. I'm probably going to tear up. I'm go- I'm probably going to cheer. Hearing all the early reviews have just been wonderful and magnificent, you know. And maybe this movie will disappoint. Maybe it will. But I'm still glad to have been a part of the journey. I'm still glad that I was a part of history. Because a lot of my videos, I made so many videos on Spider-Man No Way Home that I genuinely feel like I'm a part of this film now. I I genuinely feel like, because even all my friends, even all my friends, all my closest friends know how excited I am. Because even like, I've actually been asked how I'm, how I'm like off camera. I'm the same exact way you see me here on. I mean, yes, I have anxiety. I'm socially awkward. Yeah, that still applies. But when I'm off camera, I'm still talking about movies. I still want to talk about movies. In Spider-Man No Way Home, I talk a lot about it with my friends or even family. Even my mom, who doesn't care at all, she knows how how excited I am for Spider-Man No Way Home because I often bring, about, bring up how much I love Spider-Man, you know? And everyone around me knows how much I love Spider-Man. And, and you know, Spider-Man, to me, has been probably the most relatable character of all time. Not my favorite character, but one of the the most relatable character he's one of my favorite characters of all time and we're here we're here and this at this moment and it's funny i know a lot of people are going to tell me oh you're only excited for toby Maguire. why not why can't i be excited and hey even if they don't show up in the film um even if they don't show up in the film hey man i'm still there to see tom holland i'm still there to see tom holland spider-man you see this shirt? Do you see Toby and Andrew somewhere here? Do you see them here at all? No, you see Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. Or I said Spider-Man. Tom Holland. Tom Holland. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm there to see a good Spidey flick. And you know, I it's it's gonna be a ride. And I wanna thank you guys who have subscribed to me, who have been following me on this channel for quite some time. I want to thank you guys for giving me the privilege to talk to you guys every day, talk to you guys about Spider-Man, you know, movies, you know, when I began this channel, I just, I did it because I wanted to talk about movies because I'm a big movie fan. The main reason why I began this channel like two years ago was because everyone around me got exhausted about how much of movies I talk about, you know, even my big movie friends, like friends I know that love movies. This isn't a sponsorship by the way, but. And my friends who love movies, even they get exhausted about how much I talk about movies. You know, during the pandemic, I was like, hey, I want to start talking more about movies. And this channel has helped me grow my knowledge of films. You know, I got to meet a lot of wonderful people. I've had the privilege to meet so many of you guys, wonderful subscribers. You know, there's King Cucumbers, there's, there's Nathaniel Morgan, BK Dan, Raya. There's so many awesome subscribers who are always supporting the channel in any way they can. And... You know, also, uh, you know, even people on YouTube who I've gone to talk like, you know, uh, Max Room, Max Entertainment, Saggy Melons, RJ, uh, Enosh from Point Extra Lounge, um, Master Swag King Entertainment. You know, it's it's been a ride. And I know my channel didn't originally grow from my love of Zack Snyder's Justice League. I mean, from Spider-Man No Way Home. It mainly grew because of Zack Snyder's Justice League and even part part of it was WandaVision. I talk, I remember when I covered WandaVision live streams, a lot of new subscribers came on the channel. Uh, but Spider no, Spider-Man No Way Home is here. I hope you have a great time. I hope you guys who are planning on watching it, please do not spoil it if you've seen it already. I know people in the UK got it two days early. I'm just hoping today I walk out and I feel that sense I've been given from previous Spider-Man films, whether it's Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2, into Spider-Verse, Spider-Man Homecoming, uh, the first amazing Spider-Man. You know, Spider-Man has been that character to me who's just special. It's, he's, he has a special place in my heart. And look, maybe I put such high standards on this film 
that they probably won't get met. Maybe this film will fall flat on its face. Maybe I put the expectations too high, but hey, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, I want to watch this film. And I want to watch this movie so badly that literally I made an entire 20 minute video right now discussing how excited I am for this film. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. And if anyone who saw the entire video, please let me know in the comment sections uh, if you saw the entire video. And also let me know how excited are you are. And if you do see a spoiler, I'm so sorry. Please try to avoid spoilers. I don't. I, I think movies are better off when you don't get th get them spoiled. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to do everything possible to prevent spoilers in the comment sections. Hope you know. I'm gonna hope this video doesn't attract trolls. Sadly, we live in an internet internet age where a lot of faceless, anonymous people want to act like complete idiots. But hey, that's the world we live in. I'm getting kind of thirsty right now. I even had to take a drink during a video, which I could edit out. But to me, I don't really like editing out clips in my videos. I like to kind of keep them, make it feel like it's podcast format. I like to make videos feel like they're podcast because one of my dreams is to do a full-time podcast. Uh, movie related, obviously not. I, I don't like it. It's funny. One last thing I got to say. I remember a couple of months ago, I try, I think three times, three times I've attempted to do a backup channel where I like cover topics that are outside of you of outside of movies, whether it's like YouTube drama or real world drama or, you know, talk about random things really. And I realized that's boring. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about movies. And that's why this entire channel is dedicated to movie talk. Because this is, once again, the multiverse of movies. And thank you guys for watching this video. Sorry if I rambled on. But you guys have no idea how, how excited I am for this film. You guys have no idea. But stay on the lookout when I do my review. And I'll be seeing you guys next time. But remember... There really is no way home.